Hello and welcome to episode four of Super League Social. I'm Jess Rogers and in each show I talk to a different Vitality Netball Super League club to give you at home an insight into how these clubs and players tick. Now today I'm joined by Surrey Storm who have won two Super League titles in their time and they had played four matches before the 2020 season was unfortunately cut short. Today I've got Mickey Austin with me, who's director of netball, as well as head coach and player for Surrey Storm, alongside Yasmin Parsons, who is a Vitality Rose and a Surrey Storm player. I want to, to start, really, uh, this by talking a little bit about Storm's history. Now, Surrey Storm have been a really prominent part of the Super League for so many years. And before Surrey Storm, they were known as Brunel Hurricanes. But um, in 2009, they became, became Surrey Storm. And uh, in 2015, Mickey, you signed with them and you had back-to-back -back titles with them. And Yaz, you joined in 2016, also winning a title. Now, after that 2016 season, we saw quite a big change within the Storm setup with quite a lot of players like Tamsin Greenway and Rachel Dunn moving to new club Wasps. Mickey, what was it like, you know, being a player at the time when kind of quite a big change happened? Yeah, I mean, I guess I think the only thing I can almost um, relate it to is this time period now. Like, you know, the uncertainty that everybody is experiencing. Mm -hmm. That was literally, sorry, Storm in that off-season period because, you know, it would always be uncertain if your coaching staff was leaving or your head coach was changing. Um, but it was almost, that was one side of the coin. And then we also had the fact that seven or eight of our teammates were all going to be different as well. So, um, yeah, it was just a real period of un uncertainty. And I guess for those of us that were left behind, it was a bit like, well, you know, trying to deal with the sadness of so much change after so much success in, in one breath, but then also trying to selfishly look out for yourself and wondering who the next new coach is going to be to see whether you've got a chance of getting a contract or not. Um, yeah, it was just a real uncertain time. But mm -hmm. I think those of us that were left, you know, we were still doing a lot of pre-season training together and just sort of just tried to band together as much as we could really. So that, you know, if one of us knew something that would be shared amongst the group or um, a little bit of a united front as much as there could be. And then, yeah, I guess to be fair, as soon as the guys at, um, at, at Surrey Sports Farm knew what, what the plan was going to be, then then that was relayed. But, you know, as, as these things do, all, all of that sort of stuff takes a little bit of time. So, um, yeah, it was real uncertain. But um, I guess the good thing about netball, and, and we talk about this now, is like, you know, what happens on court and, and while you're wearing a dress is one thing. And then the minute you're sort of out of that environment, it's something completely different. So um, we're really fortunate at Storm. And I think we have been for a, a real good number of years now that we tend to have an amazing group of personnel. And I know that sounds silly, but that's quite rare in a really competitive all female environment um, and Storm have, Storm have always kind of renowned themselves on being a franchise that um, has some, some real great camaraderie like yeah we want to achieve stuff individually but uh, we also care about the person that's next to us and and we do actually like each other and, and socialize away from netball so um, we still haven't lost that with any of the, mm -hmm. any of the athletes that have been part of Storm over the years and um, yeah, it might have been that, you know, seven or eight of them was all competing in another colour. But um, yeah, we was all we all still remain really good mates sort of directly immediately after still are to this day. And um, yeah, it's now sort of just a running joke that we have over dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Mickey, you, you know, as I explained in the intro that you are director of netball and head coach and player. Um, you're at the helm now, Mickey. What, what type of leader are you for Surrey Storm? I know, selfish, isn't it? How dare I <laughs> take every single role possible? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that wasn't my choice, so I'll, I'll throw that out there as well, you know. No one would be crazy enough to, to do everything all <laughs> up in one, but here we are. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a tricky one, really. Like, I, I, I think you're probably better off asking other people, but, I mean, I, I would say that um, I'm really honest, and sometimes, you know, that, that, that comes with having some real difficult conversations, so it's almost that for better or for worse kind of thing, but um, from my point of view, at least then everybody knows where they stand, and um, my big thing is just about giving people some ownership over whatever it is, so, you know, this is what we think and we feel from a coaching point of view, so it's up to you to now either keep that behaviour because you like the outcome 
or go and change that behavior because you want to change the outcome. You know, I think um, there's a lot to be said for, you know, almost handing over a little bit of that responsibility to, to the athletes because ultimately like this, this is their job. That's what they're paid mm. to do. So um, yeah, I would describe myself as brutally honest, really hardworking and very loud slash sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Yaz, you, you've played alongside Mickey for a number of years now. Um, how is she as a, as a coach and director and, and fellow player? Now, nah, Mickey's awesome. She doesn't give enough, herself enough credit. Um, she, me and Holland, actually, um, we've had a few questions asked to us about what Mickey's like as a coach. And um, I'm just in awe of her ability to manage so many roles. Um, but also, um, she gives everything, like 100%. So, um, puts so much hard work in behind the scenes to get us to where we are. Um, she, you know, in training, um, constantly pushes us and challenges us. Um, and that's what we want as well. And um, the honest feedback is what every athlete needs um, to progress. And, you know, if we want to be hitting top four, that's what we need. Um, and Mickey gives that to you. Um, she's also, we joke, but she, we call her like a netball geek because her brain is so good on the tactical and technical side of it. Um, so if you want any an analyst on a team or a player, Mickey's got it. Um, and we Where's that tenor? Yeah, so I've got to pay you something. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you sign her up it. for this, Mickey? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being honest. I think she doesn't give herself enough credit. Um, and I, yeah, I think she's doing a, a remarkable job. And I have so much respect for her as a coach, but also my teammate as well. Um, and I think, I, like, I call her my PIC because I work with her all the time in that centre wing attack position. I feel like we've got each other's back a lot as well on court and off court. Um, so, yeah, no, she's awesome and she needs to give herself way more credit than what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk to you both about the 2020 season. Um, started the season opener back in February. Seems like a really long time ago now. I don't know about you girls. But you had an extremely close match against Dragons where you took the win by one point. Um, Mickey, can you take me back to the beginning of the season and what the vibe was like with the team at the, at the first match at the season opener? Yeah, I mean, it's so tough to think back because I don't know about you guys, but I feel like February was like in another year. Like it seems yeah. so long ago sitting here talking about it now. Um, but no, we had like a super solid pre-season, like felt like we came certainly into the NSL this year, as prepared and ready to go as, as we could do. You know, we got to the point where it was a bit like, now we just need to play. Like, we've prepped to a point where now it's just like, we just need to run it against an actual opposition and, you know, see, see where the cards lie, that, that almost kind of thing. Um, and to be fair, yeah, I mean, it was a cracker and there was a couple of great games at, at, at Super Saturday, which is why it's such a pull for fans and... Uh, franchises love to be part of it because you know you get an early look at everyone and it's just a really fun day to sort of all be in the same same roof um albeit it be quite hectic but yeah. yeah and I mean we knew coming into it Celtic are always a real hard opposition for us notoriously certainly over the past couple of years we've certainly had this like it's always been a really tight contest and I think you get that with teams who have sort of like had that core group of athletes been retained for for a period of time you know obviously because of their geographical location they're not going to get that many changes year on year so um you know they may have added a, a bit of strength here and there but the majority of the group is always you know really tough and, and really solidified and you know I think they had a couple of really great recruits last year in, in in both ends which were you know had the season have continued I think they would have been pretty dangerous and a lot of teams would have found out what we found out very quickly which was you know if this team smells blood they, they, they're gonna gun for a win and um, you know I was super proud of, of the girls and how they managed to show some real mental resilience mm. in that first round you know I think that that tends to take some time to develop and the fact that you know we managed to go goal for goal pretty much the whole way through that game or um, if it swung two goals one way, we managed to, to get momentum back and then to sort of pull pull the win out in, in the last 10 seconds or so, you know, it show, shows a lot of character. So um, I think we learned a lot from a really close game and it, it was certainly a really positive Absolutely. one to start off our season. And yeah, it's just a shame that we, we couldn't have had the reverse fixture to see what would have happened then. Um, Yaz and Mickey, you, you're both mid-quarters. Um, Yaz, 
you know, you play predominantly in wing attack, Mickey at centre. How is, how is that partnership and how is it looking for this season? Oh, it's looking awesome. We can't give away too many uh, things, though, because uh, the opposition will be listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. And talking about the opposition, well, the 2021 season, we've had some big news recently that the signing window is now open. Um, teams have until the 30th of October to get their 10 registered players and their five training partners in place. Mickey, this is a big task. How, how is it looking for you? You know, I think... I think um, for us, you know, what we're trying to do on a, on a year on year basis is, tr- as I say, like trying to maintain a real core group of athletes um, that stay together on, on a yearly basis so that we, we constantly have something to build around. Mm. Um, because then it's not like, I mean, I know it's an overall signing window and on face value, yes, you, you know, you do re-sign everybody, but if, if you can keep a main core group of athletes the same, then you're only filling slots here and there. And it's a little bit like just putting the edges of a jigsaw together. Um, and I guess we're in a, in a really lucky position this year that that's what we're doing. Um, and I guess I, I know, you know, I've, I've had it on social media with people being like, oh, Stormer in this position because we're the only team to be up front and announce our retirements early on. Um, which, which, which I get, you know, on face value is like that, you know, and, and Lorraine and Katie were massive parts of our club. So of course it's a, it's a big change. Mm. Um, but you know, it's not like we didn't know about that and it's not like yeah. we were aware that that was on the cards for the last season and a half. So, you know, we, we've had a little while to digest that and we've been putting some things in place to, to make sure that when that moment finally came that, that the girls wanted to step away and felt like it was the right time, that we already had some wheels in motion of, you know, stepping people in straight behind that. And I guess we're also pretty lucky, and I know I'm biased, but we're lucky that um, we have an amazing group of athletes in our training partner spot slash in our MPL team that if I can feel from within, I will always do that first. Mm-hmm. Um, as opposed to, you know, having to go external or, you know, import, not that there's anything wrong with that, but, you know, developing homegrown yeah. English talent and, and giving young athletes that opportunity is, is what I'm about. You know, I was one of them once and, and someone took a real punt on me as a 16 year old and, and gave me a shot. And, you know, I'm still here 12 years later. So if I can, can, can give that to one of our young up and coming athletes, then, you know, that's what I'm in the business for. Age shouldn't be a barrier. Experience shouldn't be a barrier. And if, and if you're, you're old enough and you're ugly enough to deal with the pressure of Super League let, netball, then here's your shot. Um, yeah. and I think you'll probably see a lot of that this year. I know right now no one's really talking about it, but, you know, the, the nine months or so that we're now looking at being out of netball of is a really long time to put your life on hold. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, people's priority shift, people's financial situation are different. Lord, God forbid, as a woman, you want to excel in your career and decide to, you know, really put all of your your eggs into that basket. God forbid you progress in your family life. You know, there's a lot that can change in that time period. So I think you will see more changes because of those reasons Mm -hmm. that people realise right now. Um, But that's also a really exciting thing. You know, this whole next generation of, of athletes coming through. It's about time there was a door open for some new names and faces to be put out. Out there so I think this next season is going to be a super exciting one you know who knows what's going to happen in terms of club personnel um, you know I don't even think we're in a position to say we're going to come back and do things exactly the same as what we did before so there's going to be a lot of adjustment mm-hmm. um, but that's a really exciting thing providing you can be flexible with it then um, then yeah you know bring on February of 2021. Yeah, and I think um, what you said about developing homegrown English talent, like that is definitely like one of the priorities for the Super League going forward. We do have to compete with the likes of Australia and New Zealand, and it all starts with, you know, nurturing the talent we've got in this country. Um, and I think the season ahead is going to be extremely exciting, and we're going to see some very interesting, the way that teams recruit, whether they keep a lot of players or whether they do, you know, go elsewhere, it's going to be really interesting to look at. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to see the signings that come in. And um, at Netball SL on social media and our website, we're going to be doing an update kind of every week, giving people um, kind of that overview as these signings begin to happen. The next thing I want to talk to you both about is getting to know Surrey Storm and you as players a little bit better. Yaz, when did you start playing netball and how did you get signed to Surrey Storm and what was your journey to the Roses like? 
Um, oh gosh, okay. So I started playing netball around uh, 10. Um, and I remember I actually did, because you know, like when you're younger, you do like a variety of sports. So I did things like horse riding, hockey, um, ballet, believe it or not. And um, I remember coming back from from school to my mum and I was like, mum, there's like a netball club going on. Like what's netball? And my mum was like, oh, well, I used to play that. You should go and do it. And I remember being like, oh, okay, yeah, fine. Um, I can't remember how bad I was or good I was, but I remember like enjoying the sport and it kind of just stayed with me. Um, and I remember one time I went to my ballet lesson because I believe netball <laughs> had, has helped my hamstrings, but now I'm not as flexible. And uh, so I remember coming to my ballet lesson and she was like, it's even ballet or netball. And I remember being like, well, it's netball, uh, <laughs> hands down netball. Um, so, yeah, and that's just kind of like how my career kind of progressed. But Believe it or not, I used to play goalkeeper, goal defence. So that was like my starting <laughs> with goal defence. Because um, I felt like I'd shot up early, but then just stayed this high. Um, whereas all my friends kind of then like grew taller than me. Um, so I remember joining Western Park Blades with Jan Crabtree. Uh, I got scouted for them when I was about 14. Um, and then from there, back then, the process of getting into the programme was slightly different. So mm. there used to be this thing called um, home training. Um, which I went to the one in Winchester with Jan and from there you then got selected for regional screening and then if you got past regional screening you then went to national screening and then from national screening you went to Easter camp um, so I remember my first experience of that process I got to national screening and I came up it was like the, the last last game of the trial and I remember coming up, up against these girls and they were just so much stronger than me and I just remember being floored in the last game and I was like, oh man. And uh, Jan came up to me at the end and she was like, I think you just need to go away and have a year of like getting stronger. And I was like, okay, yeah, fine. Um, and credit to my dad, my um, stepdad, he's been absolutely amazing. And I remember, I always like to tell the story, but we did like, he used to get me on, um, go on all these cycles and we'd get to the beach and we'd do like press ups and tricep dips mm -hmm. and then he's a footballer so he used to like kick the ball at me so I'd like have to catch it and like sometimes it would hit me in the face and he'd be like man up run up the hill and back and I'd be like oh my god and my neck like you know it hits your nose you're just like oh my god and he'd be like man up come on up the hill back you go and um so he used to do that a lot and I sometimes I used to see my, my school friends on the beach as well and I'd be like oh my god they know it's me like do all this training um so yeah no, I used to love it um and then from there the year after I then got into I got past national screening, thank goodness. And actually, I met Mick in um, Easter camp that, I was that year. Say, I can literally vividly remember you walking into Easter camp and everyone being like, that's Yaz, she's had a personal trainer. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh my God, how am I meant to go? I turned up in football socks. Like, not no, I remember that, yeah. What I was doing or why I was even there. <laughs> and everyone was like, are you lost? Like, what have you got on your no. I don't know. How, how old were you both then? What, I, 15? Like 15, yeah, yeah 15. 15. Um, and I, that, they was like, what are they on your feet? And I was like, they're my <laughs> socks, because I was a little hood rat and used to play in football socks over my knee, netball. <laughs> and they were like, you can't wear those. And I had to borrow one pair of socks from my roommate for the entirety <gasps> of the camp. Oh God, I yeah. Vividly, Yaz coming in like strong as hell, and everyone being like, "Personal <laughs> right. trainer," and I was like, "Oh, I meant to compete with her." No. Oh, right. <laughs> so Yaz, after you um you came in and everyone was terrified of your of your personal training your attributes. <laughs> well, um, what was your was it, what was your journey then um into Super League? Um, yeah. So um. I actually started at Team Bath, so my mm -hmm. um, my first, I was actually at Bath for five years, um, so I, I remember making the long squads, um, and like Bath back then had Pam, Rach, um, Tamsin, who has it, Stacey, Jeeva featured a little bit and then when. Um, Some absolute think, legends. Yeah, yeah. like legends. Uh, Joe Bins as well was one of them, and I just remember... Like, I used to go to all the Team Bath, like, um, camps for, like, the little girls, and that was me. And I had, like, a bag signed by all of them, and I was like, I can't take that to CP training. That's just embarrassing. Um, but Amanda Trounce remembers me, because she was in the squad then, and she was like, I remember you being, like, one of the little ones coming to all the camps and stuff. 
Um, so yeah, that was like my first transition. And I remember my first ever cap for Bath or Super League was against Glasgow Wildcats. So they were like sirens back in the day. So they were like the Scottish team. And I actually remember my first game was against Claire Brownie as well. Um, oh, yeah. So yeah, so <laughs> I was playing the introduction into your Super League. Career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a tough one. I was like, well, okay, this is Super League. Welcome. Yeah. So um, that was yeah, that was my first ever debut. Um, so I was with them for five years, and then I can't with my teaching. So because. At Bath, that's where the England, because um, back then it was called semi-centralised training. So England, that, so Bath was one of the hubs there. Mm-hmm. And then Brunel was one and Loughborough was one. Um, and that last year at Bath, I remember that's when I wanted to transition into my teaching. And the degree I got on was at Chichester University. Um, so that's when I spoke to Tamsin um, and just had a chat with her. And she was like, yeah, we'd like to have you come down to Storm. Um, so it'd be easy to like travel and things like that. Um, and we'll trial you. And then, yeah, that's when I got into Storm. And that was then that year we won the title. So it was like a really good year for me to join and stuff. So, and then been Storm ever since. So <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we actually turned to social media today and we asked, um, you know, social media fans of the Super League, some questions for you both. Um, So Mickey, from at Storm fans, if you could recruit someone from Suncorp Super Netball League, who would it be? Laura Langman. Has to be. Have you seen (laughs) she's just announced her retirement? I'll retire and she can (laughs) run riot in the midcourt with Yaz as her partner. Could you imagine? I mean, come on. I mean, I, I... there are so many stars in that league, isn't there? But how could you not pick out Law? She's just, I read something from Lisa Alexander actually today who tweeted obviously with, with Law's announcing her, her international retirement. And, you know, when you think about netball, like surely that, I mean, maybe it's because I'm a midcourt, I don't know. And Yaz, you probably feel the same, but yeah. like she is literally, she is netball. She yeah. is everything that personifies dedication you know bigger than sport mentality because second to what she does on the court let alone the fact that she is the most phenomenal athlete our sport has ever seen she's the most amazing human being Mm -hmm. literally the most humble funny um, down to earth unflashy human being you will ever speak to and that that for me is like just puts her on like Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan levels of our sport. Like, look at the outcry for, for Kobe's birthday yesterday and, and, you know, how much he transcended his time. Laura Langman is our version of that in our sport. Yeah. The, on, the only disjustice is the fact that she won't get put on the same pedestal as that um, but, but because of the environment that our sport's in. But, you know, yeah, it, hands down, if, if I could recruit anyone, I would be recruiting the best player netball has ever seen, which is Laura Langman. <laughs> well, I, I agree with, with you on that. Laura Langman is absolutely phenomenal. Now, Yaz, a question for you from at Netball Account. Who is the hardest wing defence you have ever played against? That's really difficult because there's a few wing defences are there to upset and annoy the wing attack, I feel. So there's, um, like, I'd say, yeah, definitely Serena because she's got such a high jump. So anything in pocket, you've got to be really aware of as a wing attack. Um, so yeah, I'd probably just say, yeah, Serena. <laughs> She'll love um, that. Don't <laughs> <laughs> tell her tomorrow when you train yeah. your oh, yeah, not you, Serena, it's not you. <laughs> um, one more for you, Mickey. Um, what would you say to young girls to encourage them to get into netball? And that is from Sean Adams, 46. Sean Adams, 46. That is a great question. Um, I would just say, like, love what you do. Like, I, my journey was very similar to Yaz's in the respect of I was one of those kids at school that did any and every form of physical activity. You needed someone to play around as Mickey would do it. You need someone to fill in swimming, Mickey will do it. You need someone to go and play netball, Mickey will do it. Um, so I got into it just by doing any kind of physical activity. Um, and then once I was part of, you know, netball training, I just loved it. I loved the camaraderie and, you know, being involved in a team sport. Um, I loved the fact that it was so mental as well as physical and the fact that, There were so many rules to abide by that that made my brain hurt and not just the ability to run around and like, 
you know, it meant that I didn't have to be physically the quickest or the fastest or the best, provided I could just be smarter. Um, and I, I think that that was, for me, it was a lot more ap like appealing because it was a lot more inclusive. Um, and then it was like, as, as things do, you know, all these activities start clashing. So it was like, oh, you know, you've got to pick one. And for me, it was like, well, which one do I love being at the most? Which one am I most excited about turning up to? And hands down, that was netball. Um, so for me, and especially for the younger generation nowadays, because it is really tough to be a young person in this, in this time period, uh, and especially in a sporting environment, you know, the, these, these young athletes get pulled from pillar to post, from activity to activity. Um, you have to love what you do. And the reason I say that is because, you know, I'll only speak for myself, but I've loved netball since the first time I got involved in it when I was nine years old. And I'm now 27 and I'm still involved in netball. Had I have lost my love for it at any point, I would have walked away because... Yeah. You have to love what you do. And if you do, you manage to make a real long and successful time span out of that. And then, you know, as, as you've seen, like you, you forge your career out of it. And then before you know it, that's your job and your source of income. And, you know, it's bigger than you just turning around and playing. So um, and, and whether it's netball or hockey or rugby or rounders or whatever it is, you know, you just have to be so obsessed with loving every minute of it because you know unfortunately in our business the harsh reality is it could end like that you know you're only one injury away from this whole bubble that we live in not existing anymore absolutely um, yeah, so just enjoy yourself life's too short man yeah um and Yaz I've got a question for you from fellow Vitality Rose Jodie Gibson she Yay! has asked <laughs> what is your favorite dad joke Oh, John. Oh, my God. What a question. Dad joke. I don't even know. I'm rubbish at jokes. And my dad doesn't... Uh, yeah, my dad doesn't even say many jokes either. <laughs> I was wondering if this was some sort of inside scoop or something. Yeah, is that like an inside joke? No, I don't know what she's on about. I'm going to get her at dinner and be like, you totally put me on the spot now. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> a really good one that she wants to share. Maybe. Yeah, maybe it is it is i'll find out what it is yeah report back to us because oh. i was wondering what yours would be well um i want to say huge thanks to both you yaz and mickey for joining us today on uh super league social um for everyone at home please join the conversation with hashtag super league social and make sure you're following us on all social media platforms at netball sl um where you can get all the latest news and updates um thank you so much for joining me again ladies and can't wait to see you back on court soon so thanks for chatting and um we'll talk soon thanks bye Thank you. Bye.